Okay folks, violence. So in this video we need to give an update on the market and plays, as well as two big squeezers that are up today, one being BBIG, as well as a certain vaccine manufacturer with some whispers on the horizon. Why are these running? Are they going to keep running? And what is the truth about the companies behind them? Well, we will be discussing all of that in this video. And the only thing that I ask of you in return is that you hit that ravishing like button. And also don't forget to subscribe either. Pretty damn hot today. The S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Roskies. Hot, hot, hot. Yesterday's CPI index report came in fairly hot itself. With the top line average all item numbers trending higher, breaking the downward trajectory. Blame a lot of the pricing pressures from the energy segment, which exploded last month, which also motivated a lot of pricing pressures elsewhere. But at the same time, this wasn't really a shocker because again, it was all public knowledge. I mean, we even talked about it earlier this week. Energy prices were up, so that was gonna be a huge motivating factor to the upside on pricing pressures. Unlike a lot of the other areas on the report, energy prices are updated every single day. You can just look at a commodities page and see where they're trading at. So the market probably already factored that in to some extent, but the market's been a lot less sensitive to inflation concerns. It's almost like you're getting into this area where people are scared of everything happening, and now that we're actually seeing it happen, people are like, okay, whatever, let's just go buy back in. But anyways, in terms of updates on play, SoFi has been killing it. SoFi, SoFi, lots of positive press coverage, a lot of people waking up to the value behind this. We are actually very close to my Zippy price target, despite the fact that we haven't had the two major catalysts that motivated it yet. The biggest effects of those two catalysts aren't just the actual catalysts themselves, but the aftermath of what happens when they go through, when you get that bank charter, when you get the expiration of student loan freezes. Lucid cooling off again from its previous analyst hype cycle. Keep in mind though that the long anticipated Lucid Airs are in production now and are going to be rolling off the lots very, very soon and onto the streets of our neighborhoods. There's certainly something to be said about vision and dreams and imagination, but there's nothing quite like proof of concept. I could talk about next generation technologies all I want. I can roll a big semi truck down a hill and pretend that it's running on some next-gen energy, but there's nothing quite like proof of concept. There's nothing quite like going out on the road and seeing one driving. And as they'll start rolling out, you're gonna see pictures everywhere. And I would make the argument that this might be just what we need to get Lucid to stop stagnating in the damn range it's been stagnating for quarters. At the end of the day, I mean, most growth stocks, especially the smaller cap ones, have been slowly stagnating for the better part of the year. This has been a bad damn year for the growth sector. I mean, nobody's disputing that. But at the end of the day, a lot of these companies have very, very big accomplishments and milestones that they're going to be hitting in early 2022. Start looking at this and you're like, hey, wait a second, some of these growth stocks really stand above the pack. And Lucid, I would say, is like one of the biggest. But speaking about standing above the pack, Upstart now at 385, just totally insane. Where were all these damn buyers when we were talking about this in the 90s as a high conviction play? They were nowhere to be found. But seriously, it's great to see a company that we believed in at like a quarter of the valuation when it was dramatically undervalued, now get to the point where it's dramatically overvalued. I think at this point, everybody knows that this is long past my Zippy price target, and I just can't make a fundamental argument for it, even though I love the company and I think it's eventually gonna earn this valuation. I just think this is a case of going up far too fast, far too soon. What tends to happen with a lot of stocks like this is that you get analysts that go and downgrade stocks when they're going down, regardless of what the company is behind it. And then they tend to go and relentlessly upgrade it when it starts going up. They do this because if they upgrade or downgrade based on the current trend, they're more likely to be imminently right because that's where the trend is going for that time period. And that's quite simply why you see analysts hating companies like Upstart when they're going down and then loving them when they're going up. All of a sudden they start seeing all the damn value in it when it goes up and they start seeing all the damn problems when it's going down, it's beautiful. Hey, when you're an analyst, you can definitely get away with that. But when you're actually buying it, you wanna make sure that you're buying it when other people aren't liking it. Unless you're just trying to trade off short-term momentum, get in and get out. I would say 100% of the time, if you're going to buy a stock like this, you need to get it at a good damn deal. This is a stock that's gonna do very, very well over the next five to 10 years. If you look at the business model behind this, it's easy to assume that this is gonna be worth this price eventually. But right now, I just don't see this as a buying opportunity. I just don't think that you need to FOMO into it. I think that patience is a virtue. If you're buying and holding something, you have to buy it because you believe in it and you have to believe in it at the price that you enter. I don't like to see people that hated the stock at 
90 to 100 120 dollars all of a sudden saying oh yeah it makes sense now at 380 now it makes sense because it's at 390 and everybody else already bought in it makes sense now that's how you get yourself into a really bad situation amc finally retook 40 in a win for the ooga booga amc retail traders and probably a few piggyback and hedge funds if we're being real that being said there's not much news to talk about here the situation is kind of the same and i don't want to rehash a lot of the same due diligence that we've been talking about the only thing that i can think of that's in this category that's somewhat new is that after ceo which was one of those short squeeze stocks from a few weeks back tweeted that he has hired a third party firm to investigate illegal naked short selling in their stock. I think it's excellent and great that CEOs have decided to take it upon themselves to acknowledge that, hey, there's a lot of bad practices that go on from short sellers. The more that CEOs acknowledge that that's a real threat to the shareholders and the shareholder value, the more that are going to realize that, hey, we need to crack down on this. We need to stand up to this. Crypto market a bit slow today, a little slow salamander. Bitcoin holding very well, but mostly flat. Ethereum up 5%. The next world reserve currency, Shiba Coin, has been cooling off a bit in regards to crypto miner mara lovely mara we are now testing post crash highs which means what well if we hit that if we break through that that means that our next stop is all-time highs at long-term resistance up at 57.75 it's been quite a long year for mara lovely mara she's been a huge and dirty tease but there's certainly something very very satisfying about this play there's something about saying hey I don't care how much FUD you throw at me. I don't care if you tell me that Bitcoin is worth nothing. I don't care if you tell me that miners are a scam. On this channel, our first coverage on Mara was at $10.46 a share back on January 3rd. Some of you believed in Mara long before I did, maybe at two or three or $4. That's great. You had to deal with so much FUD, dysphoria, and deathly trading over and over again. At the end of the day, Mara has been special because her cycles have been very, very quick. You've had so many ups and downs because Bitcoin has had so many ups and downs. A lot of other small caps have had slower cycles. But I think the message is clear. If you've done the work on a play and you believe in it, not me, not your neighbor Susan, but you believe in it, well, when the market's calling you stupid, what do you say? You say, good, good, thank you. I take that as a compliment. Who's going to be stupid when it's at 10 times the price? Okay, man, entree. So first, the BBIG pre-anticipatory run rally has continued very strongly today, up over 20% at highs. It's gone from 477 last week lows to now well over 8 as traders bought up the stock today after the shareholder meeting and in anticipation of next week's Cryptide spinoff. Interestingly enough, though, the real catalyst for the stock today was this article from Seeking Alpha, which boldly pronounced a price target of $40 for the stock. Citing Lomotif as one of the top short-form video platforms in the world with hundreds of millions of installs. Citing AdRiser, which we talked about last week, which allows Lomotif to be better monetized. A very, very good move, I'll admit, on the part of BBIG. They also cited undisclosed third-party independent valuations, showing that combined Vinco Ventures and Zash companies have a valuation of $5 billion. They also had some good PR with a music festival in Syracuse. All interesting points and some are true to some extent. But I got to tell you in total, the big issue I have is with that $40 price target. It kind of makes the whole thing seem a little bit like a fluff piece. They put together some true facts that we all already knew and then they try to attach that to a $40 price target. You see this so often because a lot of retail traders will just say, oh, if there's something good about a company, that means that it's worth any valuation. But you know, the numbers actually mean something. It's not worth $40 nowhere near that. But if you can acknowledge the hype without falling into it, then you're one step ahead of the game. The goal of finding a good short squeeze candidate is finding a stock that has very high short interest and also has a lot of hype built around it and a lot of people that are trying to fluff up the hype with really crazy pieces like this. You look at the short interest, the social sentiment that's spreading the hype everywhere and the big solid catalyst on Friday. And I think that you can make a solid argument for a chance at a breakout to a new high before the final event. But over the long run and probably right after the catalyst, if not slightly even before it, you're going to have a period where people start taking profits and it's going to go down dramatically and then you're going to get closer to a long-term value. There's a real company behind this. I'm not trying to say this is not a real company. Lomotif is an actual app with a lot of users. There's value in it, but it's not worth $40. Let's move on to OCGN. So on Tuesday's morning briefing, we talked about how OCGN was running up on anticipated approvals after partnered COVID-19 vaccine, Covaxin gets approved for use in children in India. That was leading to some speculation that the same vaccine would be approved in the US, where OCGN would have the sole rights to sell it, as well as in Canada, that's the other market they have the rights to sell it in. 
And then on Tuesday night's video, we spoke about how this has triggered the biggest breakout rally since June. And we talked about how the WHO approval is expected to happen this month, which is the next catalyst for the stock. And today it pushed into the $10 region on that catalyst speculation as reports came out that the WHO was likely to give a nod soon. That being said, the WHO isn't going to do anything for OCGN's bottom line. It doesn't approve it for use in the US nor Canada. It's mostly just symbolic and something to rally up hype traders, momentum traders that want this to squeeze because of all the short sellers that are betting this is going to go down and go down dramatically. What's interesting about this is that you've had rolling catalysts pretty much for the last six months. If the Covaxin vaccine gets approved in another country, people start speculating that, oh, it's going to get approved here and OCGN goes up, then it dumps. If there's reports that the FDA is getting closer to a decision or the who is getting closer to a decision, then all of a sudden it goes up again. And there's definitely a lot of bark to this. A lot of people are speculating that if this gets approved, it's going to go up three, four times. Some people are expecting it to just pop and dump like it has in the past. And that in reality, the US market doesn't really need more vaccines. And with short interest, again, pretty high at 30%. A lot of people are also arguing that it doesn't really matter as long as enough buyers come in, it's gonna squeeze or McSqueezy. But let's talk about real world benefit here. If Covaxin gets approved in the US, what does that mean for OCGN? Is that an actual huge benefit? Well, again, OcuGen will have exclusive rights to sell Covaxin in the US and Canada and will keep a 45% revenue share. Currently, it has no revenue at all, zilch, which means that if this doesn't go through, Covaxin is basically a hemorrhaging shell of a company. Outside of that, it has some early stage items in its pipeline, most of which look like low jackpot lottery tickets to me. But this company's future is largely based on Covaxin at this point. But the problem is that regardless of whether the WHO nods an approval for it in the next couple of weeks or months, most analysts say that the FDA in the US won't be giving it its approval until late 2022, early 2023. Right now, it's 2021, and already 66% of Americans have had at least one dose, which means they're not potential customers. And in Canada, almost 80% of folks have had at least one dose. Again, not potential customers. And by late 2022, the people who have still remained unvaccinated are probably the ones that made the personal choice not to get vaccinated. Yet, OcuGen is projecting 100 million doses a year in just the US and Canadian markets. There's no way in hell they're gonna be able to do anything close to that. There's not gonna even be enough people in the population to vaccinate that haven't already received all the other vaccinations. And of the scraps that are left, they're gonna have to fight for those scraps with Pfizer and Moderna. And yes, I guess some folks are going back for thirds right now in the form of boosters and maybe a new variant next year encourages more of that. But wouldn't the vast majority of people still choose not to mix the vaccines? So my thought process is, hey, at the end of the day, like most short squeeze stocks, this doesn't make sense as a company or a business model. I would say as the crowd rallies it up, play it and then lock in your profits as it starts breaking down again. Risk manager position. There's a time to trade and there's a time to hold. This is a stock that deserves trading. It's a stock that deserves catalyst riding. It's not a stock that deserves your long-term conviction. Anyways, folks, that caps off the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us below or join us on Zip Trader Circle. If you'd like to learn how to trade with our step-by-step -step lessons, our private chat, and of course, our daily morning briefings, where we brief on what's happening in the market each and every morning, as well as my favorite catalysts and what my thought process is on them, I'll go ahead and put a link to Zip Trader U below. Make sure to watch the video on the website. I'll walk you through everything you need to know about the course so you can decide whether or not it's a good fit for you. FUD stop or 50 will get you 50 bucks off before checking. Out. If you're wondering what broker to trade these stocks on, well, we like to send new traders over to public.com slash zip trader. They're a fantastic broker and you will get one free stock when you sign up and deposit just $1 using our link below. Anyways, folks, that caps off the video and I'll see you in the next one.